Hi, everyone. I'm Pip from Seymour Digital Media. You're listening to Know How Marketing Lab podcast. This podcast brings together different experts in marketing from our Facebook group, Cyberpunk Geeks Marketing Mixer. Each week we get on here and we talk about something search marketing like Google ads or SEO, social media marketing from Facebook to TikTok or website marketing. If you're a marketer or aspiring marketer, a business owner or entrepreneur, this podcast for you. We're going to share the best SEO, search, social, uh, and website strategies. We share tips and hacks, Google ad strategies, what's going on in the current market. Each week we discuss something exciting and awesome in marketing. We are here today to talk about all the things, search, social, and websites. So we're going to dive right in, right? First is technical, because who doesn't want to talk about chat? GP, Greg T, because it's number four. And I just have to firstly say, my friend got invited to Bard, and I did not. Oh, I mm-hmm. know. And she's not even a search specialist. Like, I mean, really, she was oh. a content person. Uh, quite depressing. I'm thinking. Anyway, <laughs> what do you guys, have you guys tried BART? Have you? Not yet. You guys didn't get invited either? You're like me? I've no. looked at some previews of, you know, what I've seen out there uh, or what's been posted out there who, of people who've had limited yes. access. But no, I, I haven't had anything myself, but I'm looking forward to Trying seeing it. their version of, of it. Have you tried the chat GPT, not Bard? I've tried chat GPT yeah, a couple of times. Did you, what, you try, what did you try with it? Uh, I tried a couple of things, just basic things like writing writing a, a note to, to someone. I tried to have it build me a Stanley Cup winning hockey team, but it couldn't do that. Just, just weird questions, just to see what it what it does and how it how it responds. I asked it to give me keywords for uh, like a real estate agent, and it uh, was quite generic. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we shall see, right? And then, so today we're going over technical stuff. Well, Google Ads, SEO, website stuff. Greg, why don't we start with you, and then socials. Great. What's going on in Okay. Well, WordPress. WordPress has its latest 6.2 update coming out March 28th. So that's in what four four or five days. And there's going to be some pretty good changes coming. Full site editing is going to be out of beta, so you will be able to really start building headers, footers templates for pages, all of that completely through the block editor, only only if you use a block theme. So it, people will notice what, with this new release of WordPress that they will be separating what they're call, gonna start calling classic themes and block themes in the in the theme repository so that people know the difference really is block themes will have that all of that ability to build your headers and footers and a bunch of templates and everything like that completely with the block building experience. And when you're using a block theme, as opposed to how most themes now, when you go into the appearance uh, section, there's a customize option which brings you into a screen where a lot of the themes have customization settings for the headers, footers, and a bunch of other sections. These new block themes, instead of it saying customize there, it'll say edit theme or edit something like that. And it will take you into a new experience where you can do all of this block-based building of the headers, footers, and other sections. Are you excited about this? I'm Mildly excited about it. I I feel like it'll just be a different experience. Themes will adapt to doing it this way, but there's most modern theme frameworks, as I call them, in that customizer section, you have pretty well most of the 
abilities to build your headers and footers the way you want already. So it will kind of just be a different a different way of, of building it as opposed to going into the theme customizer, you'll go into it a different way and build them all with the block, the block features. So will that affect like the, you know, the people use Divi and Elementor, how is that going to affect those sites? Do we know? Well, as, as the block based editor progresses, really we're going to have and it could be after this release, a, a time when you really don't need those page builders at all anymore because of these tools being able to basically, you know, create whatever you like, which is sort of what the page builders have been giving us for a couple of years. So, yeah, I, I see I see this is probably a big it to moving forward where page builders will eventually go away and people will just use this new experience. Ah, it's so fast moving, Ooh, eh? Interesting. I still but one yeah. thing is that, you know, when the block when Gutenberg, the block builder, came out and people needed to adopt from classic the classic way of editing to the block builder, it really took quite a long time. And there's still some people out there that would prefer and install the classic editor plugin to to still have that. I think Gutenberg might have come out at least three, maybe even four years ago. So it's been a quite slow adoption. And I see the block-based theme adoption to be at least that long, maybe even longer, because people like what they're currently doing and and the current themes like i said have this customizer that are that are very easy to work with and build you know very nice layouts already the other thing too is when you look when it comes out and you look through the block based theme options versus classic options it's like there's so many classic options right because that's what's been available up until now when this gets released, there will really be limited block-based themes to start with, and we need to adopt and start building, the, the developers need to start building those block-based themes before you can actually use this functionality of the full site editing that WordPress is going to have now. I am happy to hear that websites are getting a big shuffle too, because SEO is on fire. You know, socials, socials crazy. And I always think, I always think with websites, it's so level, kind of like you, Greg, always, you know, level. And, and, and we want like, you know, I'm glad there's turmoil, but I mean, many jobs go away. Like over the years, there used to be somebody that used to, when you buy a house, run down to some office and get some papers. I don't know. And that job went away. So I'm sure there's other jobs that have filled that job. So just like that with digital, I mean, because with chat GPT, we're, we're going to see all those like copy.ai and things like that. They're probably losing money hand over fist, right? And then it sounds like if web developers don't t move at some point towards this, if they're on WordPress, like why, do we know why WordPress is doing this? It's a much better experience to build your your website, essentially. It's it's to compete with all of the other forms out there where it is a, a much more drag and drop build the entire page experience. From the from the very beginning, WordPress has very been very rigid, right? You I remember a time not too long ago, maybe four to six years ago, when Every WordPress looked uh, website looked exactly the same. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In and fact, it's completely changed, shifted the entire notion of what a website should look like. Mm -hmm. You know, it was quite remarkable when really for me and possibly for you too, Greg, it, it signified, oh, that's a WordPress template, you mm -hmm. know, that I, I could tell without looking at it. And then other, other platforms started using those that that sort of configuration big banner three columns another piece of something 
and mm-hmm. and it was it was like that and and it kind of meant meant that website design was was really rigid it had to fit within those constraints if you were interested in having a wordpress <laughs> site but i'm so so thankful that it's really moving away and there are so many more interesting sites to look at now mm-hmm, that you absolutely. don't have to have those those static type like boring they're quite boring they're very good for business because they do a very specific thing they tell people where to put their main pieces of content if they're making their own site and gets that those gets those pieces of of content in the right spot <laughs> mm-hmm. but uh, but if you are a designer it's like and people have the expectation that a wordpress site looks like this then you're kind of stuck redesigning WordPress templates over and over and over again. That kind of look. Yeah. Anyways, it is much nicer. There's, I like like the way that things are moving in general. There's and one other no, notable web thing because we this is the longest I think we've ever spent on web. <laughs> the the one other thing coming to WordPress six point two is that Openverse the Im, the images that oh, yeah. are available in in WordPress are now baked into the editor so that you'll be able to go in and look at whatever media you have uploaded to your site already or also search through openverse for for an image that you'd like to to use on your site so it's it's right there and it'll be right there in the editor for us if you want to throw in who are they pulling in? Are they pulling in like Unsplash or? No, no, no. It's it's its own it's its own thing that people contribute images to. So, so it's like an Unsplash, but it's called Openverse. And it, we and don't. It has a better licensing. When I looked into it, it's like one of the the not better licensing. I think it's Creative Commons. Don't quote me on it, but it's like easier for people to use. Whereas if you use Unsplash, yeah, like there's a bunch of rules that have to follow because of the licensing agreements and so there's a bunch of it makes it a lot easier for people to use mm-hmm. oh so will people have to check at at regulations on what images they can use or they're just a- uh, they should always check with the regulations and don't take people <laughs> randomly on a facebook live stream as legal advice yes <laughs> yes <laughs> just that, you know. <laughs> right i think i you know when i started out web site building yes because i started there and quickly left that arena i will say that you know i used an image and i guess i wasn't supposed to and then the client a year later got a snapshot of the website with the image saying you owe us money and it was a fishing expedition but it was still i mean rena you've had issue with this too right (laughs) Yeah, totally. So while it is, copyright is important to follow because of need to make a living too. That's number one. I think we can all agree there. But there are, and and to use it incorrectly, and just because we don't know any better, is really not a great a great spot to be in. But we do find that people do get in that spot. But what I take ex- exception to, and I forgot the guy's name because there is one person in particular in Europe who does this quite aggressively it's it's actually designed his system is designed to entice people to use it incorrectly he targets people who don't know copyright rules very well and then he he runs a software looking for all of the infringements so that and then he has a third party who collects the the retroactive license fees which are are always designed to be a hit in the pocketbook for sure but less than it would be to hire a lawyer, not worth it to hire a lawyer to fight it for you, but you know, you still did something wrong. So there, there, there could be further implications there or whatever. So people pay it. So what I'm hearing is ignorance is not an excuse. No, it's, it's, and, and I actually have a really good, I'll drop my link in the, in the, in the comments section and I'm going to write it down because I sometimes forget to drop the links afterwards, but on a blog post that really goes into copyright, what you can do, what you can't do, where you can find images. And I know Pip on your website, you also have a great stock photo library for people. A to Z, A to Z. That thing, that was my first pillar of content. But sadly, I, I don't, it's not. You know, this is what, when it comes down, oh, this brings us right into SEO. And we have a client going through this now too, which is you might write an epic 
blog post with links and, mm -hmm. you know, like my image one. But if you don't sell something to do with images, is it relevant to your site? If I'm a real estate agent, should I be writing about schools and the pools in the area? Or should I focus on just the neighborhoods kind of thing, right? Like there's, there's a lot that goes into marketing and figuring out the right things to do. So when I started out, maybe not my best choice, but epic, epic blog post. That being said, I do have a guide that should be added to that blog post that is how to optimize images. So then it can flow, right? Because yeah. then I'm focused on yeah. the SEO element. So kind of interesting. Exactly. So are we done with the websites? Yeah, Phil, and you no, had two cents, didn't you? No, we are not. Oh, no. Yeah, I was, I was going to say that there's <laughs> Craig's a, like, a yeah. super, super exciting one for anyone that's a Shopify user that the they've officially come out with the Google Analytics for Connector. So you can actually use it to do e-commerce tracking and you should set that up as quickly as you can because we've got three months before the universal analytics is going down and you want to collect as much historical data as you possibly can right now. It, it works. So, yeah. One of our clients has set it up and we have data coming in and so it looks really good. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, this is, and it's super easy. You just go to your Google sales channel in Shopify and it's just right there in the yeah. center screen. There will be upteen blog posts about it in the next 24 hours, I'm sure. The other thing to note with Google Analytics 4 is if you're a business owner or a new marketer, you'll know that you might be getting a notification that says, connect your Google Analytics 4. Google's just toying with you. Like it's probably, if it's already connected, you can ignore that. If you have somebody that connected it for you, ignore that. There, it's a, I think it's a glitch that's going on in the system, but we're getting those emails like, oh my God, you didn't set it up. I'm like, no, 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 we did. It's there. We're actually focusing on now setting up conversion tracking in there, right? Because so out of the box, you can track different things like scroll depth, right? How, but you can't track like what you want to be tracking potentially is like, how far was the scroll depth, which you would use tag manager for. Arena's like, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> No, I'm actually trying to keep a half an eye on this dog that's going wild next to me. Sorry. <laughs> like, Why is the dog going wild? I know that's not marketing, but it's interesting. Um, I think I think it's because it's used to having a family with a lot of action, a lot of kids, and well, one kid, but kids have a lot of action with animals. And I sit and type on my computer for twelve hours, thirteen hours, and she's mm. she gets annoyed at me for. Right, not paying any attention. I, I'm yeah, trying I to learn how to fight when handed. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's <laughs> all right. So that. we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna move into search and social. Phelan, what's the news on search besides not being invited to Bard? Well, yeah, and I think that most likely it's going to be limited to Americans. That's usually how most Google stuff works for the, the intros is that they open it up to Americans and open up to everyone else afterwards. Mm. Regarding, it's usually high on that list, though. It's usually Americans. I'm still waiting for my Google tables. So any day that that <laughs> opens up, I'm, I'm more than happy to use that, but I won't hold my breath. Want to know more about SEO? We've got a class for that. Our mission is to educate students about the right tools, techniques, and strategies to grow their businesses using the most up-to-date search engine marketing optimization techniques and tools. Find out more at knowhowmarketinglab.com. But in general, with the SEO right now, there's... So GPT-4 got released, but it's only for businesses. So all those... So what you had said at the top, Pip, a copy copy AI, Jasper, any of those guys, they'll most likely be fine because they probably bought a very expensive license because OpenAI is not a nonprofit anymore. They are a limited profit company. I don't I've never know heard of that... a limited profit company. Uh, oh yeah, uh, limited is like, it protects you. I forgot, uh, I actually, somebody went over that with me just the other day and I forgot mm -hmm. what the difference between incorporated and limited is, but there is a uh, difference in protection. I was I was gonna say most startup <laughs> startup based companies are limited profit companies. Ayo. That was the <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh, generally um, they so GPT four has been released only to businesses, and so we're gonna see how that shakes out. Apparently, it's bigger, better, and makes as many mistakes as the first one. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah. And so the other thing is that there's a core website update that's kind of for Google that is reinforcing the double E eat. Mm -hmm. So that's that expert authority and trust. And so there, it's a lot of the same. If you just read what people are noticing, just keep an eye out for your traffic. So if you're a doctor, make sure you put that on your website. Sam. Yeah, yeah, this would be a good time. You should talk to an SEO right. about getting schema put onto your website that has the your certifications in the schema. Google does Ooh, look for that. Okay, uh, good to know. That's exciting, uh, though. That yeah, is a so good that was tip. that was one of the things that came out of the Yandex code base leak is that oh. they do look in the schema as well as on the page for any sort of certifications years of experience like any sort of like little bits that you can give like that they will use that to help with rankings we should go find the seo that's read through that yandex it's very hard to uh, read kyle, through these kyle docs roof. who kyle roof is his oh, name. okay there you go we'll tag him in the comments and with is there anything else with that? Yeah, there was a there was an update, an algorithm update, and if you look in your Google Search Console, you might see like a huge drop. But the reality is, look at what keywords the drop was, because it might it might just be keywords that aren't relevant to your business, right? That's what we've seen a little bit of. So, so for you know, if I sold artwork and then did SEO, maybe it's down ranking my artwork because I focus on SEO kind of thing. And then there's Google ads. The only Google ads news, I think, is the local services ads. So I don't know if you guys see them. So you got your text ads on Google. And then you have, you know, sometimes you'll have your map section and you could have a text ad in there. But above those, they're called local service ads. And they started with a locksmith in the States because it's very easy to become a locksmith. And then there was some underhanded things happening. And so Google did this Google Guaranteed or Google Screened. Google Screened is free. Google Guaranteed costs you money. Google Screened, you pay per lead. But so it opened up that to locksmiths and then it went to plumbers, roofers, real estate garage agents door now, garage door openers. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to have your text ads, which is its own platform to log into. You have your local service ads from Google, your own platform to look log into. And then you have your shopping ads, which is you have to have a merchant center account and that has to be connected with your search ad account. It's a, it's a lot. Google mm -hmm. is probably mm -hmm. going to put that under one roof eventually. Maybe. One of these days, it'd be nice. But <laughs> if you are buying local service ads, something to know is that most of the work happens at the beginning. There's a lot less work and it's just easy monitoring. So it's, a, it's something actually a business owner could easily do themselves if they're in one of those industries that needs that. But I also recommend not just doing that. And it does take six months to a year to get approved. So oh, the states wow. are doing it. Yeah. It, it's been very annoying. A lot of the links to the, the background check company, Pinkerton's, is like there's a lot of issues with signing in and like their API connections between the two of them is really poorly done it's and there's no also the other thing to note about the local server sets there's no way to get reporting into data studio even though google owns both of them and it doesn't make any mm. sense why they haven't opened that up so you have to log in to see how it's going well we know that google likes to you know google wants to be a little like facebook they want to hide stuff on you you know so you just pay for stuff <laughs> you know That's so true. i mean it, it, it it's funny because you know now google is recommending actually that as a business owner you have like an agency who does, if you do Google ads, that you work with a marketer mm -hmm. that can direct you because it's, it's intensive, right? Like, and the barrier to entry, it's not like you're doing SEO because there's no barrier to entry. Anybody can try to do it. Anybody can do it. There's no certifications you really need besides, mm -hmm. you know, but with Google ads, like it's a whole different platform. That's why a lot of SEOs don't do Google ads, right? Like, right. So, cause it's, makes it's sense. totally different. You can, they, they, you can learn some stuff from Google ads and affect your SEO. Is there a Google SEO certification program or just the Google <laughs> ads certification? There's Google ads, but they also have a marketing certification like that. You I can see. Take. I, see. I think so, okay. what was it used to be called? Garage? No, garage, uh, there's, there's skill shop. 
skill shop is one oh, okay and then yeah so they they do have a couple yeah skill shop is the main one i would look at they don't have one for seo and the reason why they don't is because they would probably show their hand too much if google they would made, have to give yeah they would have to yeah. give their algorithm away <laughs> they, or, or they, do have, they have a beautiful guideline yeah. so they have their their yeah. what 600 yeah. page guideline yeah. that you can read at that the reviewers <sighs> look at but they also have like their their guideline for how to how to hire an seo like what questions to ask yeah. what information so yeah, it's yeah. i send people yeah that's super time. helpful that's yeah. super helpful right yeah. and it gives you a guideline of who you should be working with so you don't get taken advantage okay. of right three and minutes we, for social oh gosh rena give her <laughs> sorry so Please. excited about the other things <laughs> Can I have what's, three minutes? what's the oh, big okay. one what's so the big I'm, one you know i'm gonna go through the main points of course it, we're gonna go through a couple of things before we hit tiktok so that i can just shut it down when we finish <laughs> when we finish <laughs> when our time is out because i could go on forever about tiktok so twitter is getting rid of its tip function and it's also going to be allowing long form tweets of up to 10,000 characters oh. along with new, along with new formatting options which is really going to change how the platform is used i think mm. that what people love about twitter is this kind of snappy real time little snippety mouthfuls and then there's usually sometimes a link to get the fuller picture so i i prefer Twitter to work like that. I don't know what the 10,000 characters is going to look like. What is our feed going to look like? Like, is it going to be a read more and then you open it up and then it takes like half Yeah, I, I hope it's know. a read more. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So we'll see because they're trying a lot of things out and then pulling, rolling things back. And I think that there was another point that if you want to get your two-factor auth authentication to happen on your phone for better security, you have to pay for the subscribe the, to the, <laughs> the blue check mark which i really don't want to do because i think that's the cheesiest thing going i don't i do not want to verify myself in that sort of way because i don't want to be put lumped into that group of people that are constantly argumentative and then you go to their blue check mark and it says oh they've paid i think that that's become a real sort of negative thing well, um, what does that tell you right i mean who who yeah nothing. so the voices it tells that me can't that afford I've, it aren't like that's I mean, exactly right if politicians exactly are telling right. you to get rid of your Netflix, then, you know, they might tell you to, you know, don't get the blue check mark. And then, you know, who's yeah. getting the blue check mark? People who only have enough money. So only people with enough money can yeah. have opinions. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah. And it's just, it's kind of, it, yeah, it's kind of icky. I, I get the icks with it. I can't really explain exactly why in my next two and a half minutes because, or one and a half minute, <laughs> Instagram <laughs> unveils two new ad formats. <laughs> there are currently testing in text in the search results and reminder ads for events and launches, which sounds like it might be pretty exciting because right now when you push an event page from Facebook, you can't really push that event page on Instagram. Like it's, you can only do it on Facebook, which means you have to set up something separate for Instagram. So this might be a really good reminder because remi reminders are great. I love reminders. I'm a big fan. Not all reminders, but the ones that I choose to opt in for, which again, you will need to opt in opt in or you can opt out. I think you can opt out. It's probably more the, the way it's going to go for Instagram. So you can opt out for those, those ads and those notifications. Adobe Firefly was launched this week. And guess what that is, guys? What? What? It's the, the generative, generative AI models of, of creating images in Adobe, Adobe. So if you have an Adobe account, I'm not sure if it's covered, if you get the whole cloud account, I don't know if it's an add on like the stock photography is, or if it's part of it, cause I haven't logged in to see mine yet. Cause mm. I just read it this morning. So that's one thing that is really great. And then let's talk about TikTok just for the last, okay, we're, we're actually at 1130, but I want like. 30 seconds at least. So TikTok, as we've all been following, if you've been following, it's it's a bit of a mess right now. They want to, the politicians want to close it down. Interestingly enough, one of the, one of the proponents for closing it down is, um, is made this, the Freudian slip that wouldn't all media owners like to have the kind of views that TikTok is getting from people. And I think that tells it all. I, I think this is less about data and more about, you know, control, because exactly what happened with Twitter is that people were were organizing on Twitter for, you know, 
Arab Spring, all of those Change, things, yeah. and and then uh, yeah, and then they got in there and changed that out. And now they've there have been a lot of protests organizing on TikTok, especially with the Trump campaign, the last campaign, the Gen Zs were going crazy with you know getting tickets and not showing up to his to Trump's all events, that's things right. like that, right and so and so they really want control I think it's more about control than it is about data but I'm I'm sure that there are some data issues too I'm not discounting that at all because obviously data is important so they what I've heard is that they there was a deadline for today or yesterday about needing to sell it to an American a buyer. I don't think there's been an American buyer located that has that kind of funds, as Phelan pointed out earlier. China has to also kind of be involved in this process well, since they own it. The other and side. Yeah, cause yeah like we don't think they... that they're, I don't think they're gonna just give it up like they, they think. Yeah. So, so everybody has been on TikTok yesterday giving out their other social accounts. All the creators are giving out their other social accounts to all the other platforms just in case it gets shut down today. And today is supposed to be the day. That will change so we'll influencer marketing like hugely, yes, right? Totally. Because totally. It, it wasn't about the famous stars. People became famous and viral because their content was so yes. good. Maybe I, I, you know, I do like YouTube shorts. That being said, we are yeah. out of time. Not we out of are. touch, but out of time. And <laughs> next week, as we were discussing, I think Phelan and Greg, you are getting on and talking about what? Website no-nos. Ooh, no, 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 no. Uh, so join us there or join us for happy hour on Friday. If you're not part of the Facebook group, we are in Cyberpunk Geeks Marketing Mixer. That's where we all hang out and socialize. We're marketers Facebook. that help each other in Facebook. We do... Uh, <laughs> push this to other channels but if you're interested in marketing and hanging out with other marketers who are doing it as a profession we're in here and we do believe it's a group effort we are not competitive we love and help each other so on that note we will see you next thursday okay bye bye everyone bye, bye. the conversation never stops in our facebook group cyberpunk geeks Join us at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash cyberpunk geeks to ask your questions, meet new friends, and learn even more about search, social, and websites. 